hi, I'm Daniel, I'm a sleep physician. And if you have insomnia, this channel is for you. This is a reply to Jane Jarvie and Nicola Oliver, who recently asked me about the health consequences of not sleeping enough or poorly. And I really want to stress this, that I believe sleep is maybe the most important thing for well-being, super, super important, but studies have not shown that not sleeping enough or having insomnia causes any negative health consequences. And it's so important to know that because that can help you sleep better. Nice having you back here. If you're new to the channel, then a big welcome to you, of course. Uh, noted, by the way, that a couple more subscribers in the last day only, and a friend of mine told me there was a Reddit post about this channel. So um, thank you, whoever posted that <laughs> about my channel on Reddit. Now, um, uh, over the past a few weeks, I've connected with Jane Jarvie and Nicola Oliver on Twitter. Um, pardon me if I mispronounced your names, but both uh, just uh, just yesterday or the day before yesterday was it kind of expressed the confusion or questions about like, you know, what are the health consequences of not sleeping well? And there is a ton of confusion there. So uh, I think the best place to start is here. Like, where does this confusion come from? Well, uh, when somebody says that sleep causes this or doesn't cause this or etc., it's all based on some form of like research study. Now, um, to show that something is causing something else in the medical world, you need to do a randomized study, meaning you need to take like 10,000 people and have half of them create insomnia and half of them not create insomnia in the other half, follow them over time and see which in which group do we get more heart attacks or death or things like that. That type of study has never been done. So we will in fact never fully be able to prove if we want that, that insomnia causes anything. That that study just never will be done. But the the there have been what's called cohort studies done, okay? And, 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 and that works as follows. So you take a big group of people and you check with them like how much do you sleep at this time and then you follow them over a number of years and then you see at that second time point do those people that had insomnia or not do do worse or better and those type of studies haven't done so here's a big one the the biggest study ever on insomnia meaning looking at if you feel like you have trouble sleeping is that going to cause any health issues well the biggest study ever was published uh January, I believe January, or maybe February, but I think I believe it was really January this year by, by Leonard Laskin and colleagues. It's an Australian group. They they did a meat analysis. So they looked at like a ton, ton, tons of other studies on the subject. And on a total of 27, a total of 27 million people were included in their study, in the Lask study. And they showed that having insomnia or not had no impact on longevity, mortality, the health outcomes they were looking at. Okay, so that's a big one. Now, um, there are many studies looking at um, sleep duration, like how much people report sleeping, and if that has any health impact. And um, I'll, I'll post a, a link to another one, a big one that was published in the European Heart Journal in, um, in December. And that included uh, about 120,000 people. And after adjusting for like things that could influence the results, they saw that only sleeping more than eight hours was linked to negative like cardiovascular outcome. You know, sleeping less than six hours was not statistically linked to that. And that is very similar to many, many other studies like that. It's, it's really when people report sleeping like eight, nine, 10, 11 hours, those are the people who have higher risk of negative health outcome. And, and the reason we believe is that, um, uh, or I believe anyway, that is that people that have health problems, they are tired and that makes them you know, feel like they sleep more or maybe actually sleep more. So it's, it's not that the long sleep is causing the health issues, it's that they have poor health from the beginning. Same thing with some studies that show that if you're kind of on, this, on the extreme other end, if you sleep like four hours or so, that may also be associated with negative health outcome, but it's not a causality relationship there. It's most likely that you have diabetes or you have cancer, you have heart disease that makes you sleep little. And then, you know, the, the whatever underlying cause is the one that is, ne is causing the negative health outcome. So that's kind of a big picture on, on, you know, health and sleep. So again, there's not been any study showing that short sleep or insomnia causes any negative health outcomes. So why is there so much confusion out there? Well, 
I want to bring up two things. One is association. So, you know, having an ashtray or multiple ashtrays is linked to lung cancer, but it's not the, the ashtray that causes lung cancer, right? And similarly, people do a lot of studies where they ask people with, for example, people with cancer, how they sleep. And of course, they sleep poorly. And then you have a link between poor sleep and cancer in this case. But <clears throat> again, it's not the insomnia that's causing cancer, it's the other way around. So there's a lot of these association studies that then are reported in, in a way that makes it sound as if it's the insomnia that causes a negative health outcome. Now, fi final things here about why there's so, so much confusion and it kind of is, I kind of segued into that. So media, right? Media wants to grab your eyeballs. And if they can report that, you know, not sleeping well causes Alzheimer's disease, that gets a lot of eyeballs, that, that gets attention, you know, that's a big problem. And nobody reports that, oh, um, not sleeping enough isn't, isn't, doesn't seem to cause negative health outcome. Nobody's interested in, in spreading that message, okay? Big problem. Second problem is in really, in, in a lot of cases, it's academia, you know, in academia where people study these things, like let's say you've invested like five years doing a PhD, looking at the impact of like short sleep or insomnia on uh, cardiovascular health. It's very, very hard for you to report after investing that much time that there didn't seem to be any impact. So you're looking really, you know, tooth and nail here to find something to report. Otherwise, like, how are you going to get funding? How are you going to get advanced in your career, etc.? So those are two really big problems there. Um, this is a big topic. So I, I hope this was helpful. And at least like, uh, understanding that from from my perspective, and my like the big picture, uh, any follow up questions, I'm, I'm really happy for all those. So please uh, leave a comment or send me an email at daniel at insomniainsight.co. And Nicole, Jane, um, uh, it's been really nice connecting with you on Twitter, and uh, hope to have more interaction with you. <laughs> um, until then, for everyone out there, uh, thank you so much and see you soon.